In today's video, we're going to be learning about the option enum and its advantages over null values. The option type is an enum which is defined by the standard library, and it represents an optional value, which is a value that might be something or might be nothing. For example, if you were to search for a term in a dictionary, you'd get a result for the term you were searching for only if it was present in the dictionary. Otherwise, you'd get nothing back because that term didn't exist. Rust doesn't have the null feature that many other programming languages have. In Python, we have the none type, which represents no value. But in Rust, we don't have anything that represents that. The problem with null values is that if you try to use one as a not null value, you'll get an error of some sort. But that doesn't mean we should discard the concept of null values entirely there are still places where the concept can be useful. So again, Rust doesn't exactly have a null value, but it does have an enum that can convey the same concept of a value being present or absent. This enum is called option, and it looks like this. So let's type it out, option, which takes a generic type of T, and I'm going to explain that in just a moment, but as variants, we will have none and sum of T. So T is just a generic type. It can be an integer, it can be a string, whatever type you use is what T ends up becoming. Anyway, now that we understand what the option enum looks like, we can get rid of this because it's already included in the prelude, which means that we can use it without having to import it. So to use it, we will create some user, which will equal sum with the value of Bob. Otherwise we can type in something such as some number, and it will contain some value of 10. Otherwise, we can type in something such as user selected of type option, and inside here, we'll pass in a string reference, and that's going to be set to none. So option just means it might contain a value or it might not contain a value. And this can also be set to some value, such as Bob. It has to either be some or none. Those are the only two options we have here. When we have a some value, we know that a value is present and that it is held within the sum. A none value, on the other hand, means the same thing as null in some sense. This does not contain a valid value. So why would having this be any better than having a null type? Well, in short, it's because option t, where t represents the type of the value, which can be any type, and t are different types. And what I mean by that is that this is completely different than this. An option of a string reference is not a string reference. And option cannot be used as a definite valid value. So here we can't type in, for example, Bob. This is definite and that cannot be used with option. It has to be a sum value or a none value. But let's take a look at an example where this can be quite useful. So let's just remove all of this and let A which will be of type u8 equal 10. Then we will create b, which will be an option type of u8. And this will equal sum 20. Now, if we try to create something such as a sum and assign it the value of a plus b, you're going to notice that Rust is not going to compile this garbage because it's garbage and you should feel bad. I'm just kidding, of course. It won't compile because they're two different types and Rust doesn't understand how to add these two together. One is a potential value and one is a fixed value. When we have a regular value like u8, the compiler will ensure that it's always going to be a valid value. We don't have to check whether it exists before using it. We are guaranteed to have that value. But when we have an option of type u8, then there's a possibility that we might not have a value. So we have to worry about that before using it. At the end of the day, this was a good design choice enforced by Rust because it helps us avoid the billion dollar mistake that many devs experienced in other languages, using a value that is null as if it actually contained a value, which obviously led to bugs and crashes. So that's good and all, but how do we extract that value from option T? since right here, we weren't able to use it even if we wanted to. Well, there are plenty of ways you can do that. And in this lesson, I'm only going to be showing you a few of them. But as we progress with this course, I will show you more and more ways to extract the value 
from the option type. For now, let's create an example, which takes a selected user. Pretend you are trying to select a user from a database or you're in a video game and you want to select a user. Now here we're going to type in option of type string slice, and that's going to equal sum with Bob. That is the user we want to select. Obviously we can't use this the way it is because what we're telling Rust here is that this value might or might not exist. And we can't use a value that doesn't exist. So we need to explicitly extract it before we use it. One way to do this is to extract it directly by typing in selected user and typing in unwrap or. And what we insert here is the default value, a value to return in case selected user is none. So here we can type in no user selected. Now, if we were to debug this value and run our program, you'll notice that the value will be set to Bob. But in the event that the selected user ends up being none, what we're going to get back is that the value is set to no user selected. Now let's change the example slightly to selected number in case you wanted to select a number. And this will be an option type of I32 and it'll be set to sum 10. That's just a random number we are picking. And something else we can do is type in let value equal selected number dot unwrap. Now, if we were to debug this and pass in the value, what we're going to get back, or let's actually clear the console first so we can see and run it in quiet mode. What we're going to get back is that the value is equal to 10. So unwrap essentially does the same thing as unwrap or, but if the value is none here, the whole program is going to panic. So if you type in none and you rerun this program, you'll see that it panicked, which is not ideal. So in most cases, this should be avoided. And there are many more ways to retrieve the value out of the option type. Once again, I'm not going to cover all of those in this video, but what I am going to do is leave a link in the description box down below, which allows you to explore them all. Also, in general, you're going to want to have a way to handle each variant when you are using the option type. And one convenient way to do this is using the match expression, which we will cover in the next lesson.